Hey everybody, welcome to another great video. So this video is the follow-up from the video that was released just before this one, where we made quick stops into four awesome breweries in Tampa, as well as the racetrack in Tampa. This is a more deep dive. We got to talk to the owners of Corporate Ladder and learn all about their brewing, uh, how their brewery started, et cetera, et cetera, as well as the brewer over at Bootleggers in Tampa. You're gonna love this video. Please go support these two breweries. Corporate Ladder's in Palmetto, Florida, just south of Tampa, and Bootleggers is kind of right in the heart of Tampa. If you're in that area, go support these two and support your local craft breweries wherever you may be around the country. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment what your favorite part. If you like more brewery content, please let me know. Let's get right into the video. This is Adventures by Carney. Let's go. We are here at Corporate Ladder Brewing. I'm very excited about it. Let's go inside and check it out. Are behind the scenes at Corporate Ladder. I'm very excited. I'm gonna go talk to the owners. Let's go. Here we are, gentlemen. Thank you so much. We have the two owners of Corporate Ladder in a nice brew house. Uh, all right, let's just start with what size brew house do you have? Uh, so we're a five barrel brew house. Uh, it's uh, just two vessels. So, uh, and uh, Love it. How about uh, well, how many fermenters? I see a lot of tanks. I see some brights. I see some fermenters. What's going on here? We got a four fives, uh, two tens, and then a ten barrel bright and a five barrel bright uh, with uh, four, four tens on the way. Four more tens on the way. Wow, we're growing. All right, so now that the statistics are out of the way, let's talk story. How did this start? This guy started it all. So you started it all. The man who wanted to hide behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, just running away from corporate life as fast as I could, uh, trying to chase a dream and. Figuring that the hey, me too. By the way, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, brand would resonate with people that felt the same way, that hated their corporate life or corporate job, and thought there was a better way. So working that nine to five, get away from the struggle, and enjoy life a little bit, a little bit of happiness. Yeah. That's me. So how'd you guys meet? Um, well, uh, a fortuitous moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a mutual friend uh, kind of hooked us up together, and we we just uh, one night. Got together and sat outside and drank beers and talked about, you know, the brewing industry, beers, uh, and build this together. All right, so were you both home brewers or how did how did this come about? Yeah, we were both home brewers, uh, obviously separately though. Uh, we had both been in our professional careers when we met each other uh, by that point. But yeah, uh, I'd home brewed for quite a while and was entering a lot of comps, uh, like actually up until that point basically, uh, while also, also brewing professionally. You had, you had already had a previous job before this one as well, so. Yeah, I helped open another brewery and uh, got some professional brewing experience on top of the home brewing stuff before opening here, just knowing that we were gonna do this and uh, yeah. So what was the, uh, the the magic moment? It was like, hey, we're gonna open a brewery. Like, what was that conversation like? Like, I think there's more than one moment. I think there's lots of magic moments that have to happen in order to get to this spot. Uh, and then there's a lot of magic moments and not magic moments that happen along the way to get to be successful. So we're on that road. All right, so what was the beer that put you on the map? Where we're like, hey, we make good beer. Probably that beer, yeah. It's probably red rum. Right here, red rum. Oh boy, I haven't had it yet. I'm very. I, I mean, I might steal a can, but it comes tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, uh, it comes tomorrow. I'm very excited. So, what? How did that change the game for you guys? Uh, it was our first like kind of bigger event where we had you know uh, a lot of themed beers, and it was kind of the first beer that I feel like. Uh, actually, it might have been cherry pie to be. Cherry pie first. To be honest, it kind of started the buzz, but this beer I think kind of sealed the deal. 
Uh, it was yeah, early absolutely. on where we were starting to get some notoriety as far as putting out some solid beer and starting to get some recognition. And these two, Red Rum and Xenomorph Blood, came along and uh, when we were in that sort of early impressionable phase and got some recognition, thankfully, uh, they're cool beers. So. We uh, were happy for that, but it put us on the map, so to speak. Awesome. Speaking of putting you on the map, have you done contests, or how do you feel about like co like beer judging competitions in general? Like, how do you feel about those? Or uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, like you know, talking about the big ones, you know, US Beer Open, GABF, uh, things like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think every brewer, you know, wants the the accolades of like, hey, I think I make great beer. Like, yeah. You know, have a bunch of people tell them why they make great beer, you know. Um, we, we've entered GABF um, only, only twice. twice now, um, and we have two silvers from it. Oh, it's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. I probably have had your beers. It's very exciting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, man. Uh, I, we've, I've never been to GABF personally. Oh, uh, no? So You've had silvers and you haven't gone? No, we didn't pour. Uh, we won two silvers in 2019, and then obviously 2020 happened. And yeah, it's right. When yeah. we were going to be invited to go and pour, uh, we didn't um, because the event didn't happen. And then this year, because of the timing and the schedule change, yeah. moving GAB up, uh, GABF up two months, yeah. we didn't have beers ready that we felt totally like get that. we wanted to enter. So we didn't enter this year. Um, so hopefully next year. Can't wait for next year. It's going to be a great year. The event is back and we'll be there for the first time pouring our beer. I cannot drink. wait because I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. So we found you by mistake. Happy mistakes. Yeah. Let's and this is unbelievable. Beer. Also, I'm a big fan of the office. You have a bunch of office uh, quips up front yeah. as well. Uh, a few just like last minute fun questions, right? Like, so inspirational like what kind of beer do you want to make and like what's fun for you to make well i don't know if they're necessarily different uh, although at times they are but i i certainly love love making lager um and really because that's i mean for anyone at home lager is a harder process and takes a lot more time well you just can't hide behind anything yeah so very full frontal you're, lager yeah you're just you have malts, yeah, malts and good fermentation and, and your water profile and all of it's there for you to, to see and enjoy. Uh, what do you think about Florida water? Florida water? Uh, like just like as using it. Well, I mean, you're saying you have nothing to hide behind with loggers. Our Florida water is no problem. We are all everything. Reverse, reverse so. Look process, at this. So. All right. So you want to talk about this? What is this? So it's just a, it's a, a reverse osmosis. Uh, system where basically it just strips all of the minerality from uh, your regular water uh, and then literally zero TDS. Yep, so total wow. resolve solids and, and then we build it back up uh, based on what hardness we want based on... So you're building, you're, you're breaking water down and then building it back up to exactly what you want in terms of hardness and softness in water. Yeah, exactly. For exactly, yep. every single beer, yeah. Yep, and everything's perfect. And do you find that certain water hardness or softness works better with lagers or ales like have you guys researched this or every, every style is different yep every kind of beer is different it depends on what you're trying to to accomplish um but water is very meaningful just like uh, any other ingredient it's really. everything yeah i mean water is everything like, we talk it's about new york pizza beer. yeah and everything else but in beer i'm a new yorker who sold beer in new york and sure. and loved the new york beer scene for years and sold beer and tasted all the beers from new york for many many years is there the best water or can you have great beer from anywhere you can have great beer from anywhere if you understand water chemistry. Uh, you want to expand on that? Sure. Uh, just on that same regard, like it's it's all about knowing what you're trying to achieve, knowing what your water hardness does based on your min minerality and your PPMs across the board. Uh, if you know that and you understand what they do, you can make anything taste like anything. Go going further than that, there's literally no water in the world that is perfect for every style. Right. 100%. So there's no yeah. great water that is great for every style. So New York water might be great for one style. North Carolina water might be great for one style. Florida water is not good for any style. The, but knowing what you're trying to accomplish, yeah, some, some would argue that. Some would argue stouts. The, 
knowing what you're trying to accomplish with the water is what's important. Knowing what you're trying to produce because we can take any water, strip it down, build it up to where we want So it. like any good project, you guys can reverse engineer it and start from the beginning and say, hey, this is what makes a great... Anyone uh, who's trying to do something consistently is doing it. But not everyone is doing it. Correct. Anyone that's trying to do anything consistently is doing it. All right, so let's have some fun. We'll change the gears. Instead of, by the way, if you're a small brewery who doesn't have this, good luck. Just keep making good beer. I mean, everyone starts in the garage, right? Yeah. Like, we, we're not discouraging small breweries to, oh, to not oh, start. Absolutely. Yeah. It'll be the single most important investment that you put in there as far as the quality of your beer. Well, it's in every single beer in the world is water is the most important ingredient. Would you agree? True. Absolutely. All right, so what's the second most important ingredient? Love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, can I say fermentation? Like, sure. Like, you know. What makes a good fermentation? Uh, lots of things. Uh, a healthy yeast, a healthy yeast pitch. Uh, <laughs> you want no, to drink on camera. I mean, I'll have a beer with you on camera. Uh, it's it's a, a particular yeast count, so you typically want a slightly under pitch. Um, and then you can make sure your yeast is viable. Um, the type of yeast, the the temperature is one of the biggest things of course um, and then obviously giving it all of the things that it needs to survive so you want to give oxygen so it can multiply you want to give it the minerals it needs to 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 thrive and eat and then um, you want to give it those sugars from your your mash to be able to actually eat those things um, yep so your mash pH is very important uh, and you know, what your water is uh, to an extent can be as well for sure, um, can affect certain things um, on how, how yeast uh, reacts in those beers. Um, but fermentation, a bad fermentation will give you a bad beer. Just like bad water can potentially give you a bad beer. 100%. I mean, we all know. <laughs> uh, all right, how about this? Let's just jump to the fun stuff. What is, and there's a reverse of this, so get ready. What is the best beer you ever made? The next one. The next one? Wow. All right, so let's taste it. Where is it coming from? Let's taste it right now. <laughs> I'm ready to try it. Let's go. Are you ready? I mean, if the next best, if the best beer, let's do it. Let's go. Can we try it right now? I mean, if your next, if your best beer is the next one, I'm in. I want to be the first. You answered it totally wrong. See what happens? But also totally right. I mean, that's the best answer ever. No one's ever said that. No one's ever said that. That's amazing. So what are we about to taste? This is a Hellas Lager. Which, tell everyone about the Hellas Lager. Uh, uh, so it's going to be very funny. All right, so tell, tell, me, tell everyone about it first before I have it. Let's let it settle. Hellas. Hellas Tell us about the Hellas Lager. So this is a uh, Munich style Hellas Lager. Um, it is going to be something that's not super hot forward, uh, not super bitter. Um, it's going to be a very nice, clean, easy to drink. Ah, oh, it's a better pour. Look at that. So it's currently clarifying still uh, in the bright tank, as you do in a bright tank. So for us, uh, we, we do a pretty simple grain bill. Uh, we're not really looking for it to be uh, you know, standing out in, in, in grain or, or hops. It's mostly about just, again, clean fermentation, a very specific water profile, uh, and balance. Uh, so, and then time. That's uh, a, a big thing. So for, when do you think, I mean, we'll try it right now. Here, cheers, guys. Thank you so much, by the way. Appreciate you taking some time for me. I guess, um, well, there. that is clean, yeah. Wow, that is beautiful. Honestly, that's beautiful. It's a little ester profile to it. It's nice. Malt is beautifully represented. Yeah, it's 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 crisp. It's it's, clean. it's a it's a cool little Hellas. It's, it's gonna be really really nice for us. Right? I hate giving super positive reviews out of the gate, but this is very very nice. This is great. Thanks, man. So when when do you think this will debut, or how much longer do you think you think in the tank? Uh, I'd say at, at worst. Uh, or so, maybe, maybe less, but it all depends. Um, it's tasting good right now. Um, oh my it's god, really about, about clarity at this point. It's, I was gonna say, it's right? Free. When Close. it's ready, it'll go on. Yeah, yeah we're not we're so. Not I'm gonna say, I mean, I, I drink a lot of beer, 
I'm no expert, but to me, I have tried lagers or Hellas lagers not as good as this. So to me, I'd say some breweries put this on right now. What are you looking for to put this on tap? Uh, just a little bit more maturity. Uh, I think that we've been scared enough that other lagers enough to know kind of when when it is. It's, uh, what is that maturity like? What are you What are you looking for? Because there's a lot of, uh, like, let's keep in mind, like, people are brewing in their garages, right? Like, sure. Well, how do you like, know? Everyone has a vision for what the beer, they want the beer to be. And so when the, like, when the beer talks to them and it, it's ready, it's ready. I mean, so why is it not ready? To me, beer, like, I have had, I have ready. had, we want to put beer out when it's ready. I have gone to breweries where this might be their best beer. And I just started out of your tank. Is, and you're saying it's going to take a little bit longer. What are you looking for? Or like, is it just something that's just a feel? Yeah, I mean, it's just, I think, palate, knowing what, it, what, what you're trying to get it to, to taste like. Um, for me, I think at this point, it's just clarity. I think it's pretty much there. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the, the taste is there. For a lager, you want a little bit more of that clarity. When you hold it to the light, you can see through it a little bit more. We're not doing hazy IPAs or anything like that. And that's what so. takes the most time, typically, is for everything to flocculate out. Uh, so. Alright, I'll end it with this. Why do lagers, when they're so much harder, more expensive, and time consuming than IPAs or any other ale out there? Why do them? Yeah, because I mean, everyone's on, we know the whole world's on an, an IPA bandwagon, uh, or sours, or other fun things that are crazy. Lagers are probably not nearly as much consumed, but they take so much more time, energy, and manpower, and money. Why do it? Because we love them. For the love of the game? We love them, yeah. We like to drink them. They're our favorite thing to consume. And I think they're making a renaissance. I they show skill. They show depth. Um, you know, we do a lot of other things which are more uh, in the realm and Enco, Enco, um, heavily fruited sours, big pastry stouts, we love all of those things, but we also love our lagers, uh, and we'll never stop making them. I love it. I guess the preferred sort of vessel to showcase uh, certain ingredients, malt and yeast mostly, but uh, we're going to continue to enjoy them, build them, make them. Yeah, for sure. Guys, I really appreciate this. Thank you so much for your time. I, I love you guys. By the way, your beer is amazing, and I'm so happy I stumbled into you guys. Thank you so much. If you're anywhere near this area, you have to come check this place out or put it on your beer map. Look at this. Look how beautiful this is. Like, look at this. Look at this. Look at this brew house. Bootleggers Brewing Company. I have never been here. We're hitting old places I've never been. It's crazy. What's going on up here? Jeez. All right. We're going inside. I, I'm excited about this place. It's got, it's got some pretty good reviews. Let's go inside, check it out. I got three of their IPAs, and they have Angry Chairs IPA as well, the AstroTurf. What'd you go with? They have yeah, a second yeah. story too. Crush. So you got the Lunchable, the Lushable Crush. Lushable. All right, cool. Yeah, I like this place. They also have outdoor seating out the back door there, and they have Golden Tea, I love Golden Tea. And we ordered food, so let's see what the oh, food looks like. Oh yeah, look at that thing. Mm. And you want the Reuben, I went with the flatbread. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Hey, what's your name? Where are you from? Uh, Greg Bush, originally Michigan, now uh, here in Tampa. So. Love it. Now you brew here at Bootleggers. I do, yep. Yeah. Uh, so what do we, what do we got going on? Today is our uh, IPA, uh, Lushable Crush. We're gonna that too. So Love it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going through cooling right now and transferring into the fermenter. Uh, Pitch some yeast here in a little bit. So basically, we also call that crashing it, right? So uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here. So. Well, crashing usually refers to after fermentation. Oh, so this is pre-fermentation. Yeah, yeah. so oh. What size brew house do you have here? Uh, it's a three and a half barrel. Three and a half barrel house. And uh, 
What goes on? Like, what what happens in here? What's your daily routine? Uh, it varies I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we got uh, pretty limited fermenter space throughout here. We're actually that's uh, our next expansion in a few a month or so. Uh, we're adding four more and more fermenters. So right nice. Uh, same size, or are you going bigger? Yeah, same size. Uh, they're actually vertical stacked, so they're going to be pretty. Similar. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I love those. And, Bread tanks for uh, large fermenters, and we've got a couple of barrels that we do in the season. Nice. How often do you brew? Uh, usually two to three times a week. Nice. Yeah, trying to turn them over as much as possible. We also do uh, some Spiedels, the little plastic guys over there. For, um, for uh, those who don't know, can you tell everyone what a Spiedel is? Yeah, so a Spiedel is a little plastic container that you can see inside the barrel. Yeah. Uh, that you can put in your fermenter and you can put the barrel in there. And it's basically just a little container that you can put your fermenters in. Look at the Spiedels. Actually, we've got uh, our cider going right now, and then um, we'll use it for saisons and that sort of thing. Too. Love it. Yeah. What is your current favorite beer that's on tap and your current favorite beer that you think is going to be released soon? What's in tank that you're excited about, and what's on tap that you're uh, excited about? Well, we just released our Ailes for ALS. That's a pretty great little uh, kind of West Coast IPA. Nice. Um, or red IPA. It's sweet. Uh, and um, that one's really good. Uh, Lush Bowl is my go-to. Um, Lush Bowl's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to call that my favorite. Um, uh, and the Oktoberfest. I do like my dark lager. So, uh, the Oktoberfest. So what'd you do in that? Like what? Uh, it's, it's a classic medicine. Nothing crazy, nothing special. Just uh, try to keep it simple. Love it. Um, Save the basic recipes. Yeah. Just nice, like German nice culture. Easy, yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of Karaka. Yeah. Uh, Love it. What is the best and worst part of being a brewer? Uh, best part is the, uh, the the fact that your job is to test uh, sample things. And, no uh, doubt, happy spout is the best part. Yeah. Uh, worst part uh, probably grain out. Green out, yeah. Green All right, yeah, that's the, a rough the, day. The yeah, a lot of cleaning. A lot of. Are you the only one in the back here? Uh, no, I have two assistants. Okay. Uh, one helped me out earlier today, and then I've got another one coming up to, uh, to clean up after I'm done. Do you have any beer that's just about to debut? Uh, no. Well, I might have a sour that's coming up. I don't know if they've actually done that or not. Then you guys, how do you do your sour process? Are we doing like uh, lacto or are you doing uh, barrel or? I'll get a sour, uh, and uh, generally lacto only. So, okay. So What's the next one coming out that you're excited about? Uh, or the one you're talking so about now? It's a, it, we have the Tangent, which is a normal uh, tangerine Berliner, nice and clean. This one's. I've never uh, had it, so. We got a, a wild cultured version of it. Oh, very yeah, nice. I think we may have already run out of. Uh, we did a, uh, a pina colada version of it on that. Uh, I saw it on the board, but I didn't, I didn't get to have it. I'm yeah, very so excited. It's, uh, it's nice. It's, it's our first foray into kind of a mixed culture kettle sour. Uh, and it, it was. Good. And it turned out nicely? Yeah, we added a bit of PDO and it just kind of rounds out the flavor. Of it. What's been the worst day? Like when you had a double tank or everything's uh, terrible? Uh, or? On our one barrel, we used to have, uh, back in the old place, we used to have a, a really loose uh, uh, bottom grate, yeah. uh, false bottom. And um, one time I, uh, uh, while stirring it on our biggest beer, uh, which is like, we're, it's, it's got 50 and a half gallons uh, and we're at about like 49 and a half. So there's nothing that I... I knocked the uh, the piece off of it and had to pull out everything in order to get that piece back in to put everything back in to then restart or continue to mash. It was, it was Imagine, uh, I mean, what's the best? Uh, Basically, you're having to pull out 200 um, pounds, uh, 180 pounds of uh, of grain, so oh. soaking wet, and 50 gallons of water, and they're all at like 150. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, on the sun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you have to uh, then reach into that whatever's left and, and maneuver all this stuff. It's, and uh, always, my last question is: there anything we could try right now before it comes out and critique? Uh, yeah. Let's see. What do I have left? What's fun and exciting out of the out of the spout? Uh, oh, we do our uh, our sandwich. Ooh. Uh, Ice cream and peanut butter sandwich. It's a it's a milk stout, um, and uh, this is our base, so we don't have any of the uh, any of the additives. Any of the fun stuff. So for those who are not watching who are beer people, a lot of those fun little additives go on at the end. So there's always a base beer, and then you play off of a base, right? Like that's how you get the ice cream sandwich. 
and then you could just add things. And a lot of time, if you see like a, let's say for example, a blood orange pale ale, a lot of that blood orange flavor comes in at the very end of the bright tank yeah. Yeah, and stuff so like the that. You yeah. Add it, the more, uh, Up front. Flavor is gonna stay there. Yeah, then you'll um, see it. So yeah, a lot of those things, vanilla and stuff, you really want kind of right at the end. I love it. So yeah. this is your base. This is the base. This yeah. is a stout, and then this will turn into. Uh, ice cream and peanut butter. I love it. Can we try it? Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Always. So this is how old is this? Ten fifteen. So basically a weekend. So it's a weekend. But in, other than the uh, another backup of the IPA that we just released, uh, uh, that's, the, that's the most fermented thing I have. I love it. Let's do it. Let's see. What, let's see what it's like. Cheers. Oh, that is. Like a baby's bottom. Yeah. That is smooth. Yep, nice. Solid oh stuff. my god! And now, how long will this be here for? Uh, this will be here for another week, and then crash over the bright tank, carp it up, and then put it into. Uh, wow, the that is unbelievable. So, in as little as right around three, as well. uh, in three weeks, yeah. <laughs> uh, we will have an amazing. That is so good. Yeah. It's got a lot. It's got a lot going on. It's gonna burst. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, so you can see it's yeah. If you've ever seen any cool videos on the internet of like just bubbles overflowing a brewery or things exploding, you can tell there's there's action happening. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, this. That's awesome. Yeah, that's on day four. Wow. Yeah. Usually they're calming down by now, but. No, she's excited. Yeah. Happy to be here. So this, uh, normally we do our Chicago typewriter, which is coffee and hazelnut. Uh, this one uh, is going to be what we call Flur Flurry, which is uh, coconut and espresso. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. Yeah, uh, All right, we're coming back to try it. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate the tour and the taste. Yeah, no uh, If you guys are ever in town, come check out. I mean, Bootleggers is awesome. You can see small, every beer is touched by hand, no large production. There's our amazing bartender who's been hooking us up with some amazing beers all day. All right, so if we're anywhere near Tampa, we're talking St. Pete, Tampa, anywhere on the West Coast, if you don't stop by Bootleggers, it's not only their amazing beer, which we just saw how they make it in the back, super small production, major attention to detail. It might be the service right here from the amazing guys like this. I mean, look at all these taps. And the top patrons obviously are getting stickers. Look at this fridge. It is orgasmic. There you have it, another great video. I hope you enjoyed it, I know I did. I love small breweries, I love craft beer. So if you like this kind of content, I've been to hundreds of small craft breweries around the country. So if you want more of this stuff, you gotta let me know down in the comments and I will make it happen. <sighs> I love beer. Listen, if you've made it to the end of the video, I want to reward you. So use the word crafty in a sentence down below and I'll pick a random person or I'll pick a few people to get some cool stickers. I got stickers from Corporate Ladder, from Bootleggers, and of course you'll get some Adventures by Carney stickers as well. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. All the information you need is down in the description, all my social media, all that other fun stuff. Please hit that like button, subscribe, get the bell on. I love you guys. That's it. Cheers. I'll see you real soon.